Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. During a Twitch live stream yesterday, somebody suggested that I should do Kasei Heavy because I was having a little bit of trouble getting the desired payload to orbit, but it was just a tight margin. This would have been overkill, but I've decided to see what the payload capacity of this would be with the whole reusability thing on the boosters and core, though even SpaceX hasn't actually managed to reuse the core, I think, if I'm correct about that. Uh, but yes, we're going to take it outside. Right now I've got 225 tons as the payload there. We have to shut down the engines on the boosters early and then separate them and then also try to reserve some fuel in the core and we'll see whether that works out for us and whether we can get 225 tons to orbit like that. So there's a reusable uh, booster and first stage sort of test not the maximum capacity without reusability. And I'll launch from Tampico, um, to do this dance, and it's a very simple thing. We're gonna see whether I can do 225 tons with it. The normal core alone uh, Kasei rocket without reusability is 95 tons. With reusability, Pekka's trying to push it to 90 tons, but I would be satisfied with 85 tons to lower for it. For those who don't know about the Kasei rocket, uh, it is my own rocket. It is meant to be optimized for low Earth orbit. Unlike most hydrogen-oxygen rockets, they tend to be more for geostationary orbit, which is a high orbit. And the, the way that all works out is very different in terms of how the stages need to be configured. Uh, but this is meant for... Oh, it's going to try and do that. No, don't. you don't know about this. <laughs> That's uh, Pekka's script. In this case, it would be probably a bad idea for it to try to do things. Let me make sure that no version of it is running here. Okay. For now, let's keep those off. Probably it'd be oriented long ways on this pad. So, 90 degrees off. But anyway, let's just go for it. We don't need that. And ignition. And launch. Off it goes. Now, uh, it might have occurred to you that the core would, of course, deplete at the same time as the boosters, if not for some thrall down. The outer engines on the core are already thrall down, thrust limited to 20, but that ends up being a 52% throttle because the bottom of their thrall range is 40. Uh, the center engine's at full throttle because we still. I, I don't want to mess with it. And we, we're going to potentially want it to try and come down. We're actually going to be going to 72 degrees for most of our stuff out of Tampico here. And I'm not doing it for St. Guns because of the need to reserve the fuel and everything. So this is going to be less than optimal, but it's better to have the sloppy way, if you will, being the test. Once I implement a KOS script for it, then it'll be more accurate, but that just means that it'll definitely be able to do what we do during the test. If I have the most you know, optimistic version during the test, then we might fall short in other situations, like if there's a big fairing, for instance. I don't generally like heavy configurations, especially ones that don't crossfeed, because you have to do this thrall down thing with the core engines, and that's inefficient. You can thrall them down in flight, but that's actually more inefficient because you're actually getting less benefit from the center stage. You actually want the center stage to keep as much fuel as it can until after the boosters go off in order for it to be optimal. I've got the engines on the boosters to action group 0 and 9. 9 would be the center engine. Pekka has made progress with his version of the landing script for Kasei, uh, landing on the drone ship. But I'll wait until we get it a little bit closer before showing the results.
Okay, shutting those down and separating. And fairing. Well, I think we're gonna fall a little bit short if I try to reuse this stage. I don't think at the speeds we're going at, it even can be reused. It's probably gonna burn up on the way down. There's no special heat protection on there or anything like that. So looking at the numbers, we're just gonna say it's gonna be expended. I'll probably take the stuff off. I don't think that, that there's any way this is gonna happen. Unless we put wings on it and do it that way, of course. Have it land in the Bahamas. It's got enough speed for that. That it can do. But otherwise, Delta V wise, we wouldn't be able to get to orbit with this payload. So I'm nixing the core landing on a drone ship as, as SpaceX does. Unless I, I'm mistaken about that. Okay. Uh, it still might not be enough, though. Well, we're gonna fall about a hundred short, and then if we wanted to reserve some fuel in the in the uh, in the core stage, we probably need at least two hundred there. Probably much more to so that it can slow down. But let me stop this and put a little bit of extra in here. Um, so let me reduce the payload size to something that might actually work out a little bit better. Maybe, maybe 215. Let's just be decisive about it and get a good figure that will be reliable. The nose cones at the top look a uh, better match for the inner stage color than they do out here, unfortunately. But anyway, ignition. And launch. The ED-9 engines at the bottom of this rocket do spool up faster now, but not as fast as the Raptor engines. This all comes down to people making a large Hydrolox engine. And in this case, it would be made as a replacement for the engines on the H-3 rocket. So it'll just be one engine instead of three on the bottom of H3. That'll be how it would be first tested on the H3 rocket as a single engine on the core. Oh, here it looks like a better match. It really depends on the lighting. It's probably like how much metallic it is, I don't know. Or specularity. Oh, shoot. Okay, booster set. That's still enough for P.E.K.K.A., I think. 215 meters per second. Okay, fairings. P.E.K.K.A. wanted 200 meters per second out of the boosters. Or, out of the first stage, anyway. Probably they're not getting as far out? I don't know. Okay, separation. Alright, this time all good here. There is a risk of the nozzle hitting the inner stage because it's such a huge nozzle. Okay. And, well, that's good enough. We are in orbit. 278 by 226, we've got 85, so that it could have gone probably to 270 by 270 without any problems, and so that's a 215 ton payload. So that's the capacity of Kasei Heavy while still retaining enough for the boosters to do a landing on a drone ship, in theory, uh, but not the core in this case. And we could probably get a little bit more margin here by just taking off 
the grid fins and landing legs off of the core. So there is that. Anyway, just a little test because it was mentioned. I've probably used Kasei Heavy before in the Solar System Tourism series, but only briefly, and I don't know if I had a number on it as far as the capacity was concerned, but certainly not with the drone ship reusability configuration. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.